All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in to another video here. Let's talk about how you can be profitable. Maybe you want to make about $10,000 a month trading the ES or the NASDAQ 100 futures. What strategy would you use to do so? One that's profitable, one that's consistent. I know I've been showing my strategy and how I trade daily, especially over in the Discord and the videos here. And we have successful people that are profiting that are consistent that are seeing the tide turn to where they were not profitable and now making money all right if you don't believe me come over to the discord community i'll allow the members who are part of the community speak for themselves uh, each person may have their own little spin or twist on how they trade uh meaning mimicking in a sense of the strategy they picked up but educated themselves on watching the videos so basically the strategy i've been showing uh, in my own personal trading, look, I'm not a mentor or an educator in any way. I'm just here to simply share because I believe the information we know as people should not be harbored. We should really uh, stress it. We should put it out there. We should help other individuals. No, I'm not saying handhold anyone, but you know, it's, it's, it's each one teach one type thing. You know, teach a man how to fish. You have to understand, okay? If you have access to something, if you know something, share it okay because by you doing so there are individuals out there that are searching for it okay that are hungry that are putting the time in the homework the research those are the individuals that in the end of things will pan out to be successful we know that it just may take some of us a little longer than others but we will all get there all right there's no there's no a uh, uh, fast pace to getting there okay we all have to put in the time in order to do so and the number one thing to trading is patience understand that okay if you're not a patient person you will not uh, be successful in this business lots of people who have commented and left me remarks here on the channel uh, especially who are members uh, loyal members to the discord community always say mike thank you for stressing the idea and, and principle of patience okay it's that psychological piece that we've got to work on now Let's jump into this video because I want to show you how you can maximize on your runners to, you know, obtain that $10,000 a month simply using a, a, a strategy that I use day in and day out on my, uh, in my trading. I will continue talking about the strategy I'll use. I don't care if it's every single day because I know we have newcomers, new traders that are coming to the channel on the daily and, you know, they're searching. Okay. Just as some of you individuals who are part of the community already a year ago may have uh, tied into or come across and now you're finding success well we have new people that come across the channel on every single day so uh, and you can share share if you become successful and you've been watching the videos share the videos with other individuals click on that share button that you see right next to the download button also go ahead and drop a like on the video uh, if you like the content like the information that I, I'm talking about because I'm getting ready to unfold and show you exactly the strategy um, meaning using a higher time frame chart to be able to maximize profit so you can obtain and reach that $10,000 a month go. All right. Lots of individuals are looking for a, a change in career. All right. To where they can uh, become their own boss. All right. Set up shop in a sense. All right. Uh, establish their own, establish their own business. So let's talk about it. So I, I marked up a few areas on the chart. This is the ES futures chart. Doesn't matter if you trade the micros. Uh, doesn't matter if you trade the NASDAQ 100 futures. It's all the same, okay? We are simply marking off of a higher time frame chart zones. What do we mean when we say zones? Supply and demand zones, okay? Those, if you do not know about supply and demand, please, I have tons of videos here on the channel to where you can educate yourself on as I go into great detail talking about supply and demand. But just simply in a nutshell, it's um, aggressive areas of buying and selling, and we will, you will see these type um, movements happen regardless of the charts you use, regardless of the time frame, regardless of if it's a higher base or a lower base chart. All right, so just first first and foremost, what we have here, we got to identify the structure of the market. That is key, right? Well, we were coming off of a, 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 if you see here, this was back in September, going to October, going to November, we were moving to the downside here. So we were bearish. And then we started moving back to the upside. Now, one of the key things I, I, I like to see and I must see as part of my trading is a break of structure back to an area of supply or demand. But in order for me to determine or to form a bias of the market in a sense of, of structure, 
I want to see if we're moving lower, okay? We've been doing that for some period of time. I need to see what the market is turning its tide to start breaking structure back to the upside. So I need for it to see it take out an area of structure and start to create structure, all right? Moving to the upside, meaning breaking structure and creating areas of demand as it is pushing higher. Now, I just want to show you an example because we started to break structure back to the upside here. Been taking out levels here, making movement back to the upside, right? Okay, and as we were doing so, each time we see areas of with this aggressive buying at where the market has broke structure to the upside, meaning break or and taking out a, a high, a prior high. So we see the market push up here, pull back, break structure right here, right? Then it pulls back. Then it turns back around and it breaks structure. We have some aggressive buying right here, pulling back. Aggressive buying right here. Then it pulls back. Now, could it have come back to this area right here, rejected? Yes, because this is an area of, um, excuse me, a demand. In this case here, we're moving higher, breaking structure to the upside. So we're looking for key areas of demand. Pay attention because this stuff is crucial. It will be game changing and life changing for anyone that is really trying to grasp an understanding of how to and, and use a, a good strategy to trade it. So yes, the market could have come here. Now this is my higher time frame chart. I'm marking my zones off of my higher time frame. All right. And waiting for the market to patiently come back to them. And when it does, I execute using a lower time frame or a lower base chart, which is going to be my low, my, excuse me, my 12 range chart. That is the chart I take my trades off of. All right. So the market folds back. It doesn't reject this area. It comes back and there is an imbalance. Now look, imbalances are extremely important. Okay. Always remember that term imbalance. Imbalances are areas where the market has either pushed Aggressive to the upside or aggressive to the downside. Basically, what you see is skipping. Okay. So as the market pushed higher here, it, it broke higher real quick. Um, and it did come back right here, but this area is, a, a, is an imbalance area, small imbalance area right here. And if you want to learn more about imbalances, just simply go to my homepage of the channel here and just type in, use that little magnifying glass to type in imbalances. There, there will lie and pop up a few videos for you to understand and where you see me draw out imbalance areas or areas of imbalances. There's a small imbalance resting right here from this candle to the close of this candle to the next to the third candle. The wick of this candle didn't come all the way back. So a very small imbalance. Now, yes, you hear me talk about a lot of times where once the market breaks up, say it took out this last down bearish candle here and then it pulled back. Yes, it did. This candle here, the wick of it closed in at the um area right here where there was uh, aggressive buying to the upside closing that that demand area there but there's still an imbalance resting back at that zone so with that said yes we still have a chance a, pro a a high probability or an area of probability to where the market can pull back to this demand zone and reject it to push higher now what you need to understand first and foremost too is that when we start breaking structure to the upside don't ever forget that what's taking place and unfolding to the left hand side of your chart so if i kind of um i guess zoom in well zoom out in a sense um and we look to the left hand side of the chart right here you see this high right here okay where well, the market was making a, a low and then it pulled back retraced well pretty well and then it pushed lower it made this high right here well if you see right here where the market pushed up pulled back and broke higher what did it do right here it took out this high right here right Okay, so as it was creating areas of aggressive buying to the upside, it took out this high right here. So if I see that the market has taken out a high, looking to the left hand side of my chart, and we have a demand zone with an imbalance resting back at to it, I'm going to mark that zone up on my higher time frame chart. Then I'm going to go a little further out. Okay, I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to mark, um, okay, I'm going to mark this area where this high was at right here. I'm going to look because the market broke through that as it pushed up, pulled back, and broke higher here. I'm going to look to the left-hand side of my chart to also see where did it, it, it take out? What, what other areas did it take out? So um, actually, let's mark the top end right here. Okay, the top end of the swing right here and see where it took out. Well, it took this area here out. Okay, it took this area here out as well. We're talking about uh, right above, where is it? 4661, okay? And let's see, it's 4661. Let's take a look to see. 466, well, it's 60 and a quarter. Let's say that. So it took this area here out and then it ran up here and tested um, 61 and a half. Okay, so 
with that said right there this is an area of resistance the market hasn't taken this area here out okay but what it did do when it pulled back right here prior to back in august it came back to this area of resistance line right here you see that all right so there is areas to still feel there's a small area of imbalance resting in this little swing right here if you can't see it, i'll blow it up okay right here all right the market has to go up there and fill that area now i normally wait for what i like to see for the break and take out this high here it took out this high here but it didn't clear this area of resistance right here so going back over to the area or the zone we were interested in which is right here okay again it came up to where did it say what did i say 61 all right so we see 61 resting right there we see it pushed up pulled back broke structure to the upside here aggressive buying now because it didn't clearly take out that area of um, resistance on the left hand side of the chart again i say always look to the left hand side of your chart to see where the market could possibly go to did it take out some levels it did but it also tapped into an area of resistance so we, what we want to do is be mindful that we get rejection to this area right here where it could possibly go up to well it'll test this high right here and fill in any areas of imbalance resting back towards the high of this uh, uh this high right here okay before it started pulling back so I already see aggressive buying. I see that we have an imbalance rested in the higher time frame demand zone. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the market to pull back to this area right here. Okay. And then I'm going to move down to my lower time frame chart and look for a step-by-step -step, um, sequence of events. Okay. Or series of events to take place that will allow me to get to the trade. Because I need confirmation to unfold for me to be able to get into the trade to take it back up to the least as high here to fill these areas of imbalance okay this is where so for you know instance it comes down here we move down to a lower time frame we look for some rejection if we can get into around you know the, the 15 16 maybe around the 20 area and take it back up to and fill the imbalances back to 40 we could pick up and have a nice run to the upside this is all it takes people always talk about how can i stay in a trade longer this is all that you need to do is to really get in and maximize your profits on one good trade marking off a higher time frame supply or demand zone and then wait for that market to come back to it and once it does retrace to that zone look to see is there an imbalance resting there look to see is it a high probability untested zone if so you know the stakes you know the probability or the chances that it's going to reject this area it's going to go back and fill those those uh, imbalances on the higher time frame so now we're going to move down to the lower time frame to see if we can get a confirmation to get into the trade to take it back up to this area right here resting at 41. All right, so pay very close attention to what I'm getting ready to show you. We're here now on my 12 range chart. This is the chart that I trade off of for entries. I trade range charts, guys. And I only trade them simply because people always ask me because it did it clean into the eye. They're easy for me to see my setups, okay? Whatever works for you, I'm not telling anyone to shift from, from a volume to a tick to a tick to a volume to a range to a time frame, uh, a time-based chart. I'm not telling you to make any changes. Just you could do this on, on other time frames now. I mean, other charts. Now, I'm not, I do not know. I'm going to tell you right now. The, time, the range charts that I use, I do not know what, the, what they are uh, comparable to if you are trading time-based charts right now or tick-based or volume-based. I don't know because I never traded those charts, okay? I love using range charts because I simply, it's clear to the eye and they're, it, they're, it always unfolds to give me multiple uh, setups, okay? Um, but in this case here, if you can get into one good trade off of a higher time frame supply or demand setup and wait for that, that opportunity, that's all you need is, is one a day. You don't have to take multiple trades. You don't have to scout multiple times, okay? Taking eight, nine, ten trades, okay? I'm not knocking anyone who does that because you may have a, a specific way to do, be able to do so. And I do the same thing. You know, if the market's ranging, I'll trade straight off my 12 range chart, okay? And, and it may not even be an opportunity to set up with the market pull back to a, a higher time frame or higher base 60 range demand or supply zone okay and i've talked about that just in a few videos a couple of days ago so watch the videos on the channel you'll pick up some good valuable tips uh because i lay it out okay i go into detail i go into depth i'm not just here to jerk your chain a little bit to give you a little bit and take something you know and pull you back no 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 i'm, I'm here to show you the full thing so that you can understand all right so now we're here on the 12 range chart my entry or lower base chart here's what i look for okay especially if the market took some time to get back to the zone 
Okay. Now if we look back at that higher time frame zone again. Let's take a look here. Okay. What are we talking about? Right here. Now, if you see here, it broke, pushed up, pulled back, made a high here. We're still within a swing here. So it's, it's all it's doing is taking out or breaking through internal areas of structure before it broke this high right here. Pushed up, pulled back, broke higher. So it took a little bit of time because uh, it, it didn't just immediately push up here and come back and feel the imbalances, all of them. It pushed up, broke structure, and then it came back. So when I, I see that, uh, especially on a higher time frame or higher base chart, I want to look for, I, I must see to give me confirmation, a again, a series of events to take place here. All right. So what I like to see is a break of structure where the market is starting to break structure to the upside. Okay. And then a pull back to now a demand zone that is unfolded here on our my 12 range chart. So I'm looking for a demand on the higher time frame, a higher base chart, a demand set up on the, excuse me, I, just hit, my, I hit my microphone. Sorry about that. I hit, um, uh, and then a demand set up on the, 12 range chart my lower base my lower time frame entry chart okay so what this box you see right here you're probably saying well what is that this is the higher time frame box that i just drawn off the 60 range chart that's the plant uh, that um demand zone not supply demand demand to the upside supply to the downside in this case here we're looking for aggressive buying so the market taps into it right now you see where the where it first taps in right here okay we didn't break any structure back to the upside what it did was just pull back and push lower. Now, this is where it, it, it starts to clearly make sense. Look what happened here. We made the low here. It taps into the zone. We broke structure back to the upside right here. It pulls back. It breaks higher. Pulls back. It breaks structure. Now, all I want to do is at this point here is that I want to look for a pullback somewhere within or back to the demand zone. Okay, that I've marked up off my higher time frame to look for a demand zone. Now that we're breaking structure to the upside on the 12 range chart, a demand zone mark up on my 12 range chart now. Now, look what happened here when the market pushed up here, pulled back, and broke higher. Is this an area of demand? It is, but it's tested. Okay, because the market when it pushed up here, it came back. The wicks of these candles closed in this, this area of demand right here. And we don't have any imbalances resting even on the inside of the zone right here. Could the market reject this area? Yeah, when it came it comes back to it, it possibly could. But it is at this point a low probability of demand zone. I like to see a gap of order imbalance resting back at the zone, okay? Uh that the when the market has moved away from it. I want to see. Did it leave a area? Or, or gap of, or of, of gap or void back to the zone okay in this case here it didn't so what it does is it pushes up pulls back breaks higher breaking structure right here then it starts to work its way back to the downside you see that well, hopefully you do now look what we have right here when it even pushed up right here it pulled back right here it's, it filled in um well th there's a small there's an area of imbalance resting right here and if you can't see it i'll mark it for you right quick just to show you you see where this candle here, the bottom end, uh, top end of that candle was taken out by this candle here. And then the third candle, did it come back to the tick or to the top end of this candle 100% from this candle here to this third candle here? Did it close in this gap right here? No, it didn't. So there's an imbalance resting here at this area of demand off the lower time frame 12 range chart. So I'm going to mark this up because it is a demand zone that I need to mark up. On my lower time frame chart. So now we've got a demand zone on the higher time frame. We get the structural break to the upside, giving me confirmation to let me know that hey, the market is still trying to push to the upside. It comes back and taps right into this area of demand off the lower time frame or lower base chart on the on the 12 range chart. What is a demand zone at? Demand, demand. When it does that, and I get the break of candle and close to the upside, meaning a bullish candle that closes and breaks above the last bearish candle to the downside, I'm long. In this case here, I'm probably myself and how I trade. I've been trading for, what, 13 years now? Okay, just mark another new, new year for me. This bearish candle here, you see where it taps into the zone right here? It immediately starts to wick away from it. At the close of it, I'm bearish. I mean, see me, I'm bearish. I'm long. I'm long because this is a nice bullish candle to the upside. The market did not pull deep into the zone right here. Let me bring this out a little a little bit more. It didn't, it didn't it didn't start closing or moving deeper into the zone. It wicked away from the zone. When you see 
the market start to wick from a zone and take take off in the opposite direction real quick, it's trying to run from that, that zone. It says, oh, I need to hit this area and take off back to the upside. And that's what it did. When I saw that candle there close, I'm going to be long to the upside. Where am I going to aim to? This is the point that I was trying to raise to you earlier. Take a look. See that area right here? These, this is an area of, this is an area of an imbalance right here that the market must go up here and fill. It's got to fill it in all the way back up here to 41. So look here. Let's go back to our lower time frame chart to see where that was we got into the trade app. If I got in here at 12, I could take this trade, trade all the way back up to around the 41 area. That's all it takes. All it takes. That one trade right there is, is probably more uh, than enough for us to be able to profit nice for the day. Let's just use the calculator to find out. Take a look here. Okay. One contract traded. Okay. On the, on the uh, excuse me, on the uh, ES features, say for instance. This could be the NASDAQ 100 features as well. All right. Now, you may have to sit in this trade for a while, is what I'm trying to say, because uh, this unfolded uh, close to London time uh, is when it came back to that zone. Uh, so maybe you trading the London session, you saw this and you got into it. You could have rolled it all the way up, um, but you had to hold through the opening of the, the session, the uh, U.S. session, okay? And maybe you didn't want to do so. But let's say you did. I'm just showing you an example here because these, tracks, these, these type setups happen all the time, even during the sessions, even during the U.S. session, okay? Don't say, oh, well, that just happened, you know, during the London session. You know, you, you definitely want to want to get out before the U.S. session. Yeah, you're going, you're, you're, going to, you're going to want to. I'm showing you an example even if this happened and unfold, unfolded within the session because it does every single day how you can hold the trade to and where to take it to. Okay. So uh, don't hate on me for what I'm trying to show you guys because this, this stuff works. All right, and if you don't believe me, you can come over to the to the Discord community and you can ask our, our members, okay? We have people who are who are trading and, and, and you know, mirroring the, the way I trade and exact way I trade, and they are doing well themselves, okay? Yeah, and it's hard to stay in a trade like this sometimes, you know, when you see kind of the market pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. Yeah, you just got to have, you got to know. And I talk about techniques to be able to stay into trades longer, you know, how to basically trail behind price as it's moving up, it, you know, as it's swinging to the upside. Break a structure to the upside. You can move your, your, your stop loss at a, below an area of support, okay? Or maybe wait for a break or swing to the upside, and then another break or swing to the upside, and then move it up to the, the, the uh, area of support right below the last swing that formed, okay? I talk about those things. Please, watch the videos, okay? So let's just say, for example, right here, we, we got into the trade uh, from, say, 12, and we took it all the way up here to 22, okay? Well, that's a 10-point move. 10-point moves, okay? All right, 10 points on the ES, all right, times four. How many ticks is that? 40 ticks times $12.50, right? Minus your commissions, all right? That's $500 on one contract. You do two contracts, that's your $1,000 for the day, okay? And if you do that consistently each and every day, okay? And you may not, you may not be able to pick up $1,000 a, uh, a day on, on the ES, but... It should be pretty easy to you, at least $500 a day on the ES, pretty easy, depending on how many contracts. And it could be more than that. But I'm trying to show you a strategy that works for you to be able to make 10 grand a month pretty easy. All right. Now, if you were someone that, that was that could hold that trade, say, for example, here and picked up those 29 points and whether the opening of the market. OK, take a look here. That's 29 points from 12 back up to what, 40, 41, 42. That's like 29 points. OK. Times uh, four, excuse me, yeah, times four, it's four ticks in a, that's 116 ticks right there. Times $12 and a half, that's $1,450 on one contract, okay? One contract. If you do that times two contracts, which I, which I normally trade, $2,900, okay? In one day, all right? So just imagine being able to pick up, all right, at least $500 a day, Okay, all right. Simple times five days. Okay, and it's easy to make five hundred dollars a day, especially if you know what you're doing and you're trading good, high quality zones. Okay, high probability zones. Twenty five hundred dollars weekly times four. That's your ten grand. Okay, just roughly ten grand. That easy. All right, and it's so easy to make more than that. Is what I'm trying to get you to see, and that's only trading one contract. One contract, okay? So if we did $500 a day, well, let's say this, okay? I'll take that back. 
let's say we did, uh, well, if we, if we were taking, trading two contracts. Well, let's just take it out of the picture, okay? Let's just say at a minimum of $500 a day. That's going to give us our $10,000 a day. Simple as that. Well, regardless if we trade one contract, two contract, I'm just trying to get you to see all you have to do is obtain to make $500 easily a day to get you, to make you 10 grand a month, okay? That is very easy to do. Trust me. The NASDAQ, you know, lots of times it's even easier because, you know, you don't have to wait as long to, 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 to see nice setups. Uh, the, the NASDAQ is throwing setups all day long, okay? Sometimes it's ranging and it's hard for people to trade that way, but it's th when it throws setups, it throws setups. So you can do this on the ES futures. You can do this on the NASDAQ 100 futures. You can even do it on the micros. Now, with the micros, you may have to take a, uh, take a, a few more trades, you know, because um, the uh, tick value is, we know it's, it's lower. So what is it? It's $1.25 uh, per tick on the, say, for instance, the micro uh, e mini es okay so and then for the uh nasdaq 100 futures i think it's 50 50, 50 cent a tick or something like that but still yes you have to either up your, your, your size of your contracts or uh take more trades to be able to get to that but you can do that you can still do it and, and it's not about trying to make 10 grand a month but if you're trying to make 10 grand a month this is how this this is this is so easy to do that's all i'm trying to say you could do it consistently month to month to month trust me I know a lot of you guys are probably trading or passing these evaluations. I don't trade evaluations. I'm just telling you that if you are doing that, I'm seeing people <laughs> that are learning and educating themselves on uh, and using a strategy and, and how I trade. And they're buying multiple accounts. And then they are, um, I guess, using, in a sense, a trading copier to every trade they take uh, to build up their accounts. You know, they're, they're basically trading all those accounts simultaneously uh, based on each trade they take and it's building up those accounts. So imagine if you have even five PA accounts or 10 PA accounts, the level of profit that you can make a month. All right. And if you see here, I'm just going to show you, look, when it rejected and I already got in at 12, look where it went to. It didn't come back. It, it went up, come back. You got to understand the move in the market because they're going to try to stop you out. Understand that. But it never came below our area became below the actual demand zone, okay? If you put your stop down here, never it never came back. If you put your stop right here, where your point of entry was, wrestling meaning, you know, a lot of people like to, is, is at the back end of a, a swing, or maybe, you you know, you waited for the break of the, the candle here. But regardless, maybe this was the area where you put your, your stop loss up. What did it do here? It came back, what, two, three ticks? I talk about that in multiple videos. Give your trade enough space to breathe because, the market makers will test. The banks, they will test. They know where your where your stops are, are resting at. At least they, they they try to figure out, okay, um, what, what people are entering the trades from. Because they know this is an area of, of, of where the market turned around a lower time frame. There's aggressive buying right here. They're going to come back to this area. They know people are going to jump into a trade right here, and they're going to try to stop you out. So if you gave yourself at least six to eight ticks right there, you never got stopped out. You never got stopped out right there, okay? And what does it do? It goes up all the way up. Pull us back, and what does it go up to? It hits that 41, 42 area to the tick. Okay, you look at the higher time frame. What did it ultimately do in the end? Just want to show you. It went up there and filled in this gap right here to the tick. 42, 41 and, and three quarters. It's that easy. But that's all I want to share with you guys. I know I'll be continue pushing out um, video content like this, sharing the strategy, stressing the importance of waiting patiently and looking for the right setups. If you're someone that's really looking to make 10 grand a month and you're serious about doing it back test the heck out of the strategy okay practice it practice it practice it you have to understand and how to how to trade it if you don't believe me we have people that do it every single day here all over our discord community if you're not a discord member okay it's free of charge find the link down in the description portion of the video add yourself invite yourself in it's free come over and join us on the trading floor that's what we as traders we share Okay, we share our trade answers. We we post them. You know, I'm on there lots of times. Well, every single day, pretty much, unless I'm in the middle of recording a video. But I'm posting my, my my entries. I'm sharing the entries that I that, that I've, I've traded. And lots of times, you'll see me trade it. Those same entries I post, you'll see me <laughs> take those trades in the videos that I post just as well. All right, but we have loyal members that are also po posting their own and sharing their own trades on the Discord community. So join us on the Trading Floor channel over on the Discord. If you're someone that's interested to gather more information, more insight about the trade breakdowns, getting you, giving you an in-depth, um, basically as if you're sitting right next to me, okay, as I break things down, 
uh, as far as the trade breakdowns, or maybe you're someone that's also wanting additional uh, um, information surrounding how I trade. I have a video playlist. Now, this is for this is a private community that's, that's titled the Elite Channel Supporter. Okay, uh, um, tier or membership program through through YouTube. It's only six dollars and ninety nine cent a month. Okay. All right, and basically what you're doing is you just support me as a content creator, but I'm giving you loads of valuable information in return back through perks and rewards. You're receiving the trade breakdowns. You're receiving the video playlist. That's a list of videos that I've pulled out from over 700 videos on this channel now. Yes, 700 videos and made a series of link by link videos, okay, a playlist to where you can click on and watch the videos. Those videos are the ones that cover the core uh, ingredients, core uh, parts of the my trading style okay so for six dollars and 99 cent a month not a day i know more than you most of you spend more than than six dollars and 99 cent a day on a cup of coffee a day on a breakfast sandwich a day on a, on a, a lunch sandwich or a salad or whatever it is your, your 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 personal preferences of uh you know materials that you eat okay food foods that you eat you, or you, you spend more than that we're talking about on a monthly basis, six ninety nine. You're getting a lot of valuable content. If you don't believe me, come over to the Discord community. Ask the members once again. Hey, has becoming an elite channel supporter helped you? You know, taking your trade to the next level. I'll allow them to speak for the, for, for, for uh, allow them to speak. I'll allow the members who are part of the community to speak. Okay, you'll find out. Uh, but all you have to do is click on the join button that you see somewhere near the share or download button, or you can find the link to the. Um, to become a member right below the discord link down in the description portion of the video but hey that's all i have to say for you to you guys i wish everyone a great and restful weekend as we gear up for the uh week to come uh be safe i know we got some frigid temps across the uh, most of the country here it is very cold this weekend and uh, if you guys are you know living in the no northern states bundle up because i know you guys are probably getting impacted and hit with snow uh as i speak I'm a, you know, but for me, I'm further south. So, um, so I, I wish everyone, you know, everyone next week to have a successful and profitable, profitable week. And like I always say, try your best to be green because it is certainly obtainable each and every day. Take care. Oh yeah. One last thing I forgot to say, please make sure to sub, click the sub button, turn your post notifications on and drop a like on the video.